Raising the subject. Now that your confidence is brimming and you are armed with the rhetoric you need to effectively rebut almost any counter-argument, you may wish to proactively engage others in conversations about the relative harms of marijuana and alcohol. You may even want to raise the question of why our laws more severely punish those who engage in the use of the less harmful of these two substances. At the same time, you may be hesitant to raise the subject at the Thanksgiving table right after someone has asked you to pass the mashed potatoes. We don't blame you. That's why we encourage you to wade into the subject more slowly, bringing it up after others have initiated a marijuana-related conversation. Fortunately, you will likely find that the subject of pot comes up more often than you previously noticed. Here are some common examples. Developments in the political and legislative arenas. With incidents of drug-related violence on the U.S.-Mexico border becoming more frequent and more frightening, mainstream political commentators are starting to raise the issue of legalizing marijuana as a means of shutting off a source of drug cartel funding. The possibility of legalizing marijuana to increase U.S. tax revenues is also popping up in the news more and more often. Medical marijuana is another subject frequently in the news, as many states work on implementing their existing medicinal cannabis legalization systems while other state legislatures consider adopting laws of their own. Suspensions of Athletes for Possessing or Using Marijuana Just during the writing of this book, there were a spate of pot-related punishments in the National Football League, the National Basketball Association, and, of course, the world of Olympic sports, a few of which we detailed in Chapter 6. Some of these players had no prior disciplinary actions in their career, yet they were harshly punished nonetheless. Of course, had any of these players been out drinking at a club instead, there likely would have been no disciplinary action taken at all. Busts of Celebrities for Marijuana Possession Unlike pro athletes, celebrities aren't likely to be suspended from the Screen Actors Guild if they're busted for weed. That said, you can be certain that the mainstream media will publish embarrassing headlines and perhaps even a police booking photo when a well-known individual is unfortunate enough to get caught with a little marijuana. This was the case in 2004 when Art Garfunkel of the famous singing duo Simon and Garfunkel was found with marijuana in his jacket when his driver was pulled over for speeding. Garfunkel is hardly alone. Other celebrities busted for pot include Oliver Stone, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Dennis Hopper, Mick Jagger, Neil Diamond, Dionne Warwick, Carlos Santana, Joe Cocker, David Lee Roth, Bob Denver, and Don Wells, Gilligan and Marianne from Gilligan's Island, and the late Tupac Shakur, while he was in jail, no less. Politicians' children running afoul of marijuana laws. If a young person is cited for marijuana possession, it is not mainstream news. If that young person happens to be the son or daughter of an elected official, that is news. Al Gore III, the son of the former vice president, learned this lesson the hard way in 2003 when he was pulled over for driving without his headlights on and police officers discovered a baggie of marijuana. Elected officials take note. We know that the younger Gore is hardly the only child of a prominent politician to smoke an occasional joint, so you may want to support legalizing the safer choice before you are publicly ridiculed as a hypocrite. Marijuana-related incidents in your community or on your campus. There have been more than 20 million marijuana-related arrests in the United States since 1965. Therefore, it is likely that someone you or your family knows will have a marijuana-related run-in with the law at some point in his or her life. It's equally likely that someone you know at your university will get in trouble for marijuana possession. Either situation provides you with an opportunity to publicly defend someone in your community who has been inappropriately punished for making the rational choice to use a less harmful substance. Alcohol-related incidents in your community or on your campus. If you truly wish to take advantage of the unique nature of the marijuana versus alcohol subject, alcohol-related incidents in your community or on your campus. If you truly wish to take advantage of the unique nature of the marijuana versus alcohol subject, begin to inject the topic into conversations about alcohol-related incidents. Not surprisingly, you will find these opportunities occur frequently. Bar fights, celebratory rites after professional or college sports championships, disruptive and drunken behavior at sporting events, out-of-control fraternity or off-campus parties, and news about professional athletes getting arrested for violent behavior 
after a night of drinking are all incidents that can serve as a starting point to initiate a conversation about the folly of steering Americans toward alcohol use and prohibiting them from using cannabis instead.